Fordham in Rhode Island in the Rose Hill Gym in the Battle of the Rams. Fordham looking to move to 2-3 and three in the Atlantic 10. Ryan Canty going to get the offensive rebound early and slam it home to put Fordham up three. After some fair leave in basketball, Fordham's going to go on a little run. Jermaine Myers with the steal and the layup at half court. It was going to be a 7-0 run for the good Rams. It's going to be closed out here on this play by Mandel Thomas. What a day for Thomas. 17 points for the freshman, a season high. That's going to close out the run. 7-0 for Fordham. Fordham dominating on the inside, out-rebounding the Rhode Island Rams on the offensive glass by a 19-9 margin. Canty with a putback. 18 second chance points for Fordham, just 8 for Rhode Island. Brandon Frazier's going to hit his first three-pointer of the game here. He had five in the first half. Fordham trailing at the half by one, 32-31. We had some fair leave in basketball over the start of the second half. No team with a lead larger than five, but Jeff Short's Going to pick a good time to score his first points of the game right there. The right-handed layup's good to put Fordham up by three. And on the next possession, it's going to be short again, getting the steal. He's going to find Canty, who's going to tip it out to Frazier. Over to Mandel Thomas, and Thomas is going to put the Rams ahead by five with that pretty little layup off glass. A couple minutes later, Fordham up three. Brandon Frazier with the ball at the top of the key. He's going to do a nifty little up and under move to put Fordham back ahead by five. And then with about a minute to go, Frazier going to tie the game for the Rams with this free throw. Travion Leonard misses his first but makes a second, puts Fordham up one. After two missed threes from Xavier Munford, Brandon Frazier going to nail two free throws to put Fordham up three. He was 11 of 11 from the line in the second half. Xavier Munford going to miss once again for Rhode Island. And Fordham comes out on top in the Battle of the Rams. Fordham 66, Rhode Island 63. Fordham moves to 2-3 and three in the A-10. And here's what Coach Pecora had to say after his team's victory. You know, I said to the, uh, to the team, I don't believe in the term ugly win. I've never had an ugly win. Every win I've ever had in the history of coaching has been beautiful. Because they're hard to come by, especially the last three years. So... Uh, you know, they're a good team. They're a wall coach team. Danny and Bobby, they do a tremendous job. They came in prepared. They took away a lot of the things we did. I think we did a decent job countering. And these young guys keep getting better and better. I mean, at one point I looked out on the court and it was like, you know, Frazier was out of the game there for a stretch. And we had, I think, three freshmen, two sophomores on the floor. So, but big numbers by, you know, on the glass, especially Travion has eight, Mandel had seven. Uh, Ryan Moose did a great job in a big rebound late with, with 11, and Canty has eight rebounds in 19 minutes. So I thought that that was a key for us, especially in the second half, to, to win the battle of the boards. You know, we, our free throw shooting, we shoot 80% in practice. If we don't, we run. We do a drill and we shoot 80. My 10 year old son, Sean, won the free throw shooting contest last night in town. So. I know I'm teaching it the right way. I got him in the driveway. He's making them. So he advanced to the next round. So uh, I was kidding with Dr. Zambetti about it. But uh, these two guys uh, stepped up. Mandel just continues to get better and better as Brandon does. We're starting to respect 29 from, from, from uh, Brandon. But Mandel did a very good job. Uh, and for a night when we shot the ball so poorly from the three, and, you know, it was a rock fight, man. Both teams shoot under 40%. I think a lot of that had to do with effort as much as, uh, as the team's not being able to make shots. I thought the game was, you know, very intense. There were a couple moments there, obviously, where it looked like it was going to go over the top, and I'm glad we were able to keep our old quarters. That's not what we're all about. You uh, <coughs> mentioned how every game you guys play here, you view it as a must when you have to win these games. How does it feel to win this one in such a close fashion? You said it was so intense there a couple times it looked like, you know, it was going to turn out late. Yeah. Um, what, what was uh, going through your head as the I just kept telling them, just compete, just compete, continue to compete. We, you know, we've got a history. We win close games because we have good guards. And as these guys continue to get better, I mean, Joe's got the numbers, but as these guys continue to get better, we'll continue, you know, we'll get better at winning close games. That's why you play guards. That's why you play three guards. Because you can really control the tempo at the end of the game. I thought you made some great plays. I thought, and, and uh, Travion really stepping in for Chris Gass, and you know, gives you 13 and 8. And, uh, and then the two headed monster kind of at the center position with Rooms and Canty tonight. You know, they, they, they get 19 rebounds between the two of them. So uh, that's good stuff. Uh, I thought 
So, you know, Brian Smith had a rough night. So it's the next guy. It's next. And Jeff Short gave us some decent minutes and did some things out there. Uh, you know, he, he had a big drive to the basket to score um, late in the clock. And, and I thought that was a big time play. And he got a couple of good rebounds for us in traffic. So a team effort. Mitch, I know this is, you know, a battle here today um, with the 8-10 tournament, you know, the bottom half. Sure. This game needs to be a lot. Um, and it did get sort of out of control and sort of escalated a little bit. Yeah. But I was wondering, at 7.35 in the first half, you really got to go on that trap bend. <clears throat> you were making a statement. It seemed like that point on, mm -hmm. things never really, you know, came completely back together. And um, what was it that bothered you so much there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I, you know, I'd have to look at the timeline. I mean, I think I was, you know, they, we, we were told before the game, you know, we're really going to watch guys holding in the post. Now, our game plan was to pound the ball inside, so I thought there was a lot, a good amount of that going on. Uh, we were also told to stay in the coaching box, and neither one of us was doing that. So, you know, uh, as coaches, we look for every advantage we can get. And I thought it was a good time. To, I, I was trying to get our guys fired up, our fans fired up. So, uh, you know, sometimes they'll feed off of you if they, if they can't feed off a big play. We weren't making plays at that time. So, uh, I think that was the one. Munford was 3 for 13. Did you guys target him and he had kept coming? He was a key. We points. talked a lot about Munford. You know, we talked a lot about Powell. Uh, you know, we knew how well uh, you know, uh, Malasevic could shoot the ball. And uh, he had a rough time other than at the foul line. So those were the three guys we thought were the keys. We thought on the baseline we could handle because we were bigger and stronger. But I was concerned about Powell and Munford just taking the game over. And uh, they're crafty guards. They're, they're good little players. You mentioned the intensity and how you tried to fire everyone up. Is that why Ryan Rooms played so much in the second half? You know, he was he was just he had a big night on the glass, but also you know he was fired up after every play after yeah. every whistle. He was, uh, he was competing. Right now, I'm just still we're young. I mean, I'm tired of saying it, God, but I mean, part of uh, a team maturing is learning the term the term I used to use. Uh, prior to coming here, we used to talk about championship possessions because we were in the league that we were competing for the championship. We're not at that point yet. I talk about winning possessions and how every possession has got to be as if it was the last possession, like tonight. We gave up an offensive rebound. We said one stop, one rebound will get us one win. And that's the way we were looking at it at the end there. One stop, one rebound, one win. And they got an offensive rebound and got a second chance. And then again, one stop, one rebound, one win. And until you, until you live your life like that as a basketball player, you're not going to win big. And these guys are getting better at it, but now it's got to be the triple down. Hopefully we took a, a big step in that direction tonight, and uh, you know, especially with the big guys. And in this pressure game where you know there's a bottom hand is going to try to get that yeah. extra up on the ace hand, um, how did you feel about your freshman? Did they show you they could play today? Oh, yeah, I mean, very much so. I mean, they're playing so much, and they're doing a better job in practice. You know, his dad was a great player, Rody, Chad. So uh, I kind of thought of that when he made a big, that big-time block, and he's been great making a block or two on jump shots a game. So uh, he could really evolve into a great defensive specialist in that sense. But, yeah, the freshmen, the freshmen were great, you know. Uh, and, if, you know, as a coach, you see what they're, they look, when they look at you in, their, in the eyes when they come off the court, the difference between the way they look at you when they're freshmen and the way they look at you when they're juniors and seniors is tremendously different. Then, you know, he comes off now and I'm lighting him up and he looks me right in the eye. As a freshman, you know, their heads are down and I'm trying to get them to look, you know. And that's the maturation. And we're, what we're doing is trying to speed up the maturation process. Brandon, with um Closing seconds, you grabbed everyone to have a timeout. The huddle, you said something you were really emphatic. What were you saying to the team there? Because you're with Chris out, and even as a junior, you're one of the leaders. You. What, what did you say that's calming down to get? Um, yes. um, I, I know it's happening, but it's um, it was, um, coach was um, saying that if they get a score, the top top of the ball, yeah. attack it, and get to the paint and get found. I just hope you guys are just like said. No, they're not going to get a score, they're not going to drop the ball. Let's just get a stop now and go to the free throw line and make shots. 11 for 13 for the free throw line without that. It, that's not it was big. 
big man in the game, like 13 from the free throw line. Um, Dell, yeah, Dell was 6 for 8. Um, we shot pretty well in the second half from the free throw line. First half was safe, but we was picking up. You know, he said his father played at URI? Yeah, Trey. Okay. Well, what was that, the 80s? They would owe to Lamar and those guys. Oh, yeah. I was coaching oh, okay. the Oscars. Oh, right. And I remember his dad's a player. Okay. So, so you know much about, you know, it was a nice playing well against your dad's old team? Yeah, it was fun. He yeah. texted me earlier. He said, uh, he was rooting for me, but he texted me earlier. He was rooting well, for the Rams today. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, and we well, were well, all trying to kill him because one of his, um, his, his teammates was the assistant coach, Professor Murphy. He said he was trying right. to bring the dogs at me, so I was trying to kill him. So was, uh, I'm sorry, so was, uh, you, you, your dad wasn't at the game or anything? No, he was with the Rochester. 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 So did, did you follow URI growing up when you were? Uh, I'm pretty sure I did, but I don't know. You don't know? Okay. You know, when you come with Notre Dame prep and actually name, it's almost like you have something to prove. You know? We've had some good games lately, but it's not just night game. Today you had a real good game. Do you feel like, you know, you said something about what that means? Uh, yeah, I just try to be aggressive. You know, I'm coming up with something like that. I'm my shots so, up. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, Luke is such a great kid, and he, he makes shots. And then the lights came on, and he, and he hasn't been able to make them. But, you know, when you run that side ball screen with him, it's money. He's getting the shot. They're either the guy coming off that ball screen is getting it, or Brendan Bush is usually one of these two guys, or he's getting it. And now he's gotten some looks. He's going to have a breakout game for us, and we need him with Chris out there. And Chris, you know, we don't know the answer. When he'll be back. So, uh, you know, we'll just get treatments tomorrow. We're going to take tomorrow off and and, uh, and practice Monday and Tuesday and get ready for St. Joe and here on Wednesday night. But we're going. We're moving forward as if getting Chris back would be a pleasant surprise when it happens. But I, I don't know the answer to that. Mandel, what's just two questions for you? What's going through your mind right now? I mean, how you know, monster game, career highs, and across the board. What, um, what was going right for you? And then there was, one, at one point in the second half, you went up. looked like you wanted to dunk the ball. And you sort of laid up. Did you want to dunk the ball there? Or? Yeah, I thought about it, but I felt I was too far. I'm uh, pretty sure everybody else said I was not going to play. How does this feel having to monster game at home, getting the crowd uh, amped up and coming away with the win? It felt good. You know, we, need, we needed this win. So we started off wanting to go into conference to step up. Coming off Wednesday, you know, I mean, Wednesday was it was uh, embarrassing. And I told them that they, you know, we, they paid the price. You know, we got off the plane and we practiced at five in the morning. So they understood. I, you cannot. You know, we're going to lose. We lose this game tonight. I can sleep tonight. Now, well, but you know, I tell everyone I sleep like a baby. Two hours and I get up and cry and I go back to sleep for two hours. <laughs> Going through a season like this. So you went right, right from the plane to practice, basically. Yeah. How long of practice? An hour and a half. We ran more. It was more like track practice than basketball. <laughs> oh, hey, Dad, I can remember the other one. The team is just energized. Yeah, well, look, okay. great crowd. I mean, this is this is the environment we want here, and we need here. You know, uh, in this league, you know, we go to Dayton. There's ten thousand people in red sweaters. You know what I mean? And there's a huge home court advantage, and we need that home court advantage here at Rose Hill. And uh, it can get you over the top. And I thought the crowd was great today. It's the way the freshman played today, and you know, have Brandon next year as a senior. But looking ahead, you know how how are you looking at the lineup that could be, you know, Brandon, Mandel, you know, Brian. There's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I mean, there's no doubt. That's why every day we just keep saying we just have to get them better. We can't be, you know, and I, and I battle with it. Uh, you know, and, and how to how to deal with each one of them and how to keep their chins up and you know like we we win we beat Duquesne and then we lose to tough UMass and, and Charlotte and we watched right here in this room we watched the film of four possessions two from each game and I said if you get if you make the right play on these four possessions we're three and up in the eight time but once again that's 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 winning possessions it's knowing you gotta get a score you gotta get a stop you'll win the game you gotta get a stop you gotta get a rebound you'll win the game and you know we did that today to win a close game. There's about seven minutes left. Two texts. What did the refs say about that? I guess. Like they said two guys the coming off the court, bunched against each other. And, uh, you know, hey, look, you got two teams that are really competitive. Two coaches, you know, programs that are competitive. And uh, 
you know, like I said, it's a it's a big game. We know what's going on in this conference. We have the board, you know, the, the standings on the board in our, in our locker room. They'll get updated, you know, tomorrow morning when the guys come in. I want them to know where we are. I want them to know what we need to do as we move forward. So yeah, this is this is why the conference is so good and why it's so competitive.